do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we are going to study about the measurement of inductance by the uh, by the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge maxwell inductance capacitance bridge it is a type of alternating current bridge and this bridge measures the inductance by comparing it with the standard capacitance so here we will study its circuit diagram its balance equations how the inductance is calculated and then we will study its phasor diagram so let's start with our topic So Maxwell inductance capacitance bridge it is a type of alternating current bridge which is used for the measurement of self inductance okay it measures inductance by comparing it with a standard capacitance that is why it is called the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge okay inductance is measured in terms of the capacitance and maxwell is the scientist who invented it now we know that in any bridge network it consists of four arms so alternating current bridge because it is a type of alternating current bridge so it is also consisting of four arms in those four arms we have the four impedances out of those four impedances three impedances are known to us means we know the value of those impedances and one impedance is unknown to us okay so these impedances are known and one impedance is unknown to us so this impedance impedance means it can be a combination of resistance it can be a combination of capacitance or it can be a inductance okay combination of any these three can be the impedance so the value of these three impedances is known to us and we are measuring the value of the unknown impedance in terms of these three known impedances so there are four arms in the bridge network also we are having a detector this detector is used to obtain the balance condition of the bridge okay we say that a bridge is balanced when the detector is giving us the null position or null indication is given by the detector okay so detector helps to obtain the balance condition of the bridge also there is an ac power supply this ac power supply is used to operate the bridge network okay so the voltage and current will be provided by the power supply so in the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge also we are having these three things the four arms the detector and an ac power supply so let's see the circuit for this bridge so it is going to have the four arms
C and D. A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A. These are the four arms. In those arms, we are having the four impedances Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Okay. So Z1, it consists of the Rx and Lx. Z2 consists of the resistance R2. Z3 it consists of the resistance R3 and Z4 it consists of C4 and R4 the capacitance and the resistance. It's a parallel combination of the capacitance and resistance. Now the total power supply provided by this AC is E. Okay. And the voltage drop across this arm AB is E1, across the arm BC is E2, this is E3 and this is E4. Okay. And the current flowing in these arms is here we are having I1, this is I2, this is I3 and this is I4. So this is the complete circuit diagram of the Maxwell inductance capacitance bridge. Let us see that what will be the value of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Okay. Now Z1 you can see it is the series combination of the resistance and inductance. So we will write it as Rx plus J omega Lx. Then Z2 it is equal to R2. Z3 it is equal to R3. And Z4 it is equal to the parallel combination of C4 and R4. Okay. So if we write the parallel combination R4 and parallel combination of 1 upon J omega C4. So it is the parallel combination. So how we are going to solve it? We know that 1 upon J uh, in the parallel combination we have to take the reciprocal. So 1 upon R4 plus 1 upon Xc that is the capacitive impedance. And Xc is equals to 1 upon J omega C. So what we will write here 1 upon R4 plus Xc will be 1 upon J omega C means J omega C4 will be there. So it will be 1 plus J omega C4 R4 upon R4. And we have to take the reciprocal of this. So the parallel combination can be solved as R4 upon 1 plus J omega C4 R4. In parallel combination, we know that we have to, uh, at every time we have to take the reciprocal 1 upon that resistance. So your reactive impedance is written, okay, and this is R4. Value of X is 1 upon J omega C. So put that value and solve this, you will get the value of the parallel combination. So this is the value of the four impedances of the Maxwell inductance capacitance bridge. Now, To find out the value of the inductance, we have to write the balance equation of the bridge. Okay. And for the balance equation, we know that the general balance equation for an alternating current bridge is given by Z1, Z4 equals to Z2, Z3. That is the product of the impedances present in the opposite arm is equal to the product of the impedances present in the opposite pair of arms. Okay. 
Now value of Z1, Z4, Z2 and Z3 is already known to us. Okay. So what we will do, we will substitute the value of these impedances in this balance equation and then we will solve it to find out the value of the unknown in inductance. So Z1 is equal to Rx plus J omega Lx. So substitute its value here. Z4 is the parallel combination that is R4 upon 1 plus J omega C4. Z2 was R2 and Z3 is R3. We have just substituted the values in this balance equation. So we have got this equation. Now solve it. When we solve it, we will get Rx multiplied with R4 plus J omega Lx multiplied with R4 equals to R2 R3. When we put this term on this side, we will get R2 R3 plus J omega R2 R3 C4 R4. This term will be multiplied with this and one multiplied with this. Okay. This LCM that is the lower denominator term is going to be cross multiplied. So we have got this. Now in this term if we see in this equation we are having these two terms which are called the real terms. Real terms because they are not having the omega term involved in it. Now these terms where omega is involved they are called the imaginary terms. So we will separate out this equation into two separate equations. One equation is for the real parts and the second equation is for the imaginary terms. So equating the real terms we get Rx R4 equals to R2 R3. This is one equation. And if we equate the imaginary terms, then J omega and J omega, they will be cancelled out. The remaining terms are Lx R4 equals to R2 R3 C4 R4. Again R4 and R4, they are cancelled. So we will get Lx equals to R2 R3 C4. So we have got two terms in through which we can get the value of the unknown inductance and this resistance also. So Rx and Lx, Rx is equals to here R2, R3 divided by R4 from this equation. And if you find Lx, it will be R2, R3, C4. So this is the final result of the balance equation. You can see that we have find out the value of this unknown inductance in terms of the known capacitance. C4 is the known capacitance. So in terms of capacitance, we can find out the value of the inductance. And Z1, it is what? You can see that we have calculated Z1 as Rx plus J omega Lx. So put the value of Rx. This is R2, R3 upon R4 plus J omega Lx. Lx value is R2, R3, C4. So this is the complete Z1 that is the unknown impedance. So you can see that with the help of the balance equation, we can find out the value of the unknown impedance in terms of the known impedances. Okay, Z1 was unknown to us and we have find out its value in terms of Z2, Z3 and Z4. Okay. Now. Not only the unknown impedance but also because here we are finding the value of inductance and inductance is always related 
with the coil every coil is going to have a self inductance value okay so when we talk about the coil then there is another term called the quality factor of the coil quality factor represents that how the coil is performing how much energy that coil can store in it so it is related with the efficiency or the performance of the coil that how good the coil is how much energy it can store in it okay so to find out the quality factor which is denoted by q omega lx upon rx it is the ratio of the inductance and the resistance of the coil so you can see in the circuit that we are having this coil with this coil we are having a self inductance lx and also a resistance rx okay so the ratio of this is going to give us the quality factor of the coil now value of lx and rx is already known to us so let's put its value here lx was r2 r3 c4 and rx was r2 r3 divided by r4 so r2 r3 will be cancelled it is equal to omega c4 r4 so that is the quality factor of the coil so not only the value of rx and lx but after calculating it we can find out the quality factor of the coil also okay so you can see that those coils in which the value of inductance is more they are going to give us the good quality of coil okay now next comes the phasor diagram phasor diagram is the representation of the various phases of the circuit okay like uh, phases means that because we know that in this circuit the power supply is connected so this power supply is going to provide the current and the voltages in the circuit so what is the relationship between the voltage and the current flowing in the circuit across each component okay we are having resistance also we are having inductance also capacitance also so what is the relationship between the voltage and current flowing across these components that will be represented in the phasor diagram so phasor diagram is the representation of the various phases of voltage and current now to draw the phasor diagram we should uh, know the standard relationship we know that in the resistance in a resistance voltage and current they are in same phase with each other in inductance voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degree in capacitance voltage lag the current by 90 degree so this is the relationship standard relationship between the voltage and current phases in the case of resistance inductance and capacitance okay so we will use this relationship to draw the phasor diagram of the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge now to draw the phasor diagram we have to take a reference phasor okay some uh, some phasor should be taken as reference so that all the remaining phases can be drawn according to that okay 
So in general, we always take the current I1 flowing in the arm AB as our reference phasor. Okay, so I1 is drawn as the straight line. This is our reference phasor. Now consider this circuit. Here in this arm AB, we are having two components, resistance and inductance. So if we compare the voltage drop across this resistance that is given by R1, Rx, I1, Rx, okay? I1 is the current, Rx is the resistance. So this is the voltage drop, okay? Because we know that across resistance, we are having V equals to IR. So here I is I1 and R is given by Rx. So this is the voltage drop now across inductance it will be i1 omega lx i1 is the current omega because it is the inductive part the uh, reactance is there we are considering an lx okay this is the inductive reactance so this is the voltage drop across this inductance now across the resistance we know that voltage drop and current they are in same phase with each other. So the phasor for current is already drawn here. So the phasor for the voltage is drawn as I1 Rx on the same line. Okay so that it shows that they are in same phase with each other. Now, if we draw the phasor for the inductance, we know that voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degree. So, voltage phasor will be here at 90 degree angle, the phasor is drawn and this is given by I1 omega LX. Okay. Now, the total voltage drop across this arm is E1 and this E1 is the sum of the voltage drop across resistance and capacitance. Across resistance it is I1 Rx and across capacitance it is I1 Omega Lx. So if we take the sum of these two phasors it is going to be equal to the phasor for the E1. Okay so here if we draw the resultant phasor it is equal to E1. So sum of these two is equal to the resultant phasor E1 which is the sum of these two I1 Rx plus I1 Omega Lx. Now when this bridge is balanced this bridge is balanced when no current is flowing through the detector and the voltage drop across E1 is equal to the voltage drop across E3. The voltage drop across this arm BC is equal to the voltage drop across the arm CD. So E1 will be equals to E3 and E2 will be equals to E4. Okay. So what we will do, whatever will be the phasor for E1, that will be the same phasor for E3. So E1 is here, it will be equal to E3, okay. And E3 is what? If you find out the value for E3, this is the voltage drop across this resistance R3 and the voltage drop across this resistance R3 is I3 R3. So we will write it here I3 R3 and this I3 R3 is the same here. Okay. Now comes the second half part. If we come to this part here the voltage drop across this resistance is I2 R2. So this I2 R2 will be in same phase with the I2. Okay, so we will draw the phasor for it. Here we have drawn I1. This is E3 that is I3 R3. 
now here uh, also if we see this is the voltage drop across the resistance this is the uh, current i3 across that resistance so current and voltage they will be in same phase with each other so here if we draw the current we have to draw the current on this same line this will be i3 i3 and e3 they will be in same phase with each other because they are across the resistance okay now this part i have already discussed with you that i2 and i2 r2 they will be in same phase with each other now here if we consider this is i4 this i4 if we divide here here we are having ic and there we are having the current i i r4 okay the current flowing in this arm that is i r we can say so i4 is equal to i r plus i c the because this current is splitting into two this is i c this is i r okay so i4 is equals to i c and i r now i c is the current across this capacitance now in the circuit when if we know that uh, when the bridge is balanced it means that no current is flowing through the detector so when no current is flowing through detector it means that all the current which is flowing in this arm will go to this arm and the current which is flowing in this arm will go to this arm okay so in this arm we are having i1 so i1 will be equals to the current i2 and i3 current will be equal to the current i4 so wherever we have drawn the phasor for i1 that will be the phasor for i2 also and the phasor for i3 will be the phasor for i4 also okay now if we consider this part here we have seen that the voltage drop is i2 r2 and this voltage drop is in same phase with the current i2 so i2 phasor we have drawn here so on the same line we will draw the i2 r2 also now voltage drops are also equal this e2 voltage drop is equal to a4 voltage drop as i have written here so e2 is given by e2 is what i2 r2 and e4 is equal to the voltage drop across the capacitance and also the voltage drop across this resistance you can uh, you know that in the parallel combination the voltage drop remains the same so whatever will be the voltage drop across this capacitance that will be the same voltage drop across this resistance so voltage drop across capacitance is ic upon omega c4 ic is the current flowing across the capacitance and omega c4 is its a reactance value so and if we see the voltage drop across this resistance that will be ir plus sorry ir r4 ir is the current flowing through the resistance and r4 is the resistance value so both these are equal to e4 e4 is equals to ic upon omega c4 also and to ir and r4 also so this resistance part this is where voltage drop due to this resistance so this will be equal to i2 r2 because e4 is equals to ir r4 also so i2 r2 is equals to ir r4 also so wherever we have written i2 r2 we can write ir r4 also now again if we come to this resistance current is ir and voltage drop is ir r4 so they will be in same phase with each other volt for voltage we have already drawn the phasor here ir r4 so ir current will also be on the same line okay now if here ir r4 is also equal to ic upon omega c4 so here we can also write ic upon omega c4 
now if we talk about capacitance we know that this is the voltage drop across capacitance now in the case of capacitance the voltage leak, uh, lag the current by 90 degree so if we have drawn voltage here so current will be leading to it by 90 degree so at 90 degree angle we are going to draw the current ic now as i have said here that this i4 current is equal to ic plus ir okay this current is splitting into two i4 is equal to ir plus ic so if we take the resultant phasor of these two phasors it will be equal to i4 and i4 is equal to i3 we have already written here so you if you extend this you can see you will get the phasor for this the sum of ir and ic current is i4 phasor okay so all these things are being considered here all the components we have considered now also if we see the total voltage drop is e ek minute ac on kar do so if we see here the total voltage drop across this bridge is e okay so e will be equal to the sum of the voltage drop across the arms that is e3 plus e4 or e1 plus e2 so we have drawn here the phasor for e1 e3 also and e2 e4 will be here this is what e2 or e4 this phasor and this is the phasor so if we if we extend these two phasors we will get the resultant phasor for the total emf e which is the sum of e1 plus e2 or e3 plus e4 sorry e1 plus e2 and e3 plus e4 okay so this is the phasor diagram you can see that here we have uh, considered the voltage and current across each component and across the arms also we have considered and this phasor diagram is giving us the relationship between the voltage and the current phasors flowing in the circuit so if you know the relationship that what is the relationship between voltage and current across the resistance capacitance and inductance it will become very easy for you to draw the phasor diagram okay just take the reference phasor and consider the voltage and current across each component and draw them on this phasor diagram with respect to this reference phasor okay now in the last comes the advantages and disadvantages of the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge its advantages are if you see the balance equation you can see that in this balance equation the value of rx and lx which we have got this is free from frequency there is no frequency term or the omega term involved in it okay so first advantage is that the frequency does not appear in any of the two balance equations so frequency is uh, the balance equations are independent of frequency also the balance equation is independent of the losses associated with the inductance okay because frequency term is not involved so losses are not considered in it also if you see the resistance term the scale for the resistance it can be directly calibrated to read the inductance directly okay uh, lx is there then r2 r3 and c4 so we can 
the scale of resistance can be calibrated directly can be calibrated to read the inductance directly also this bridge is very useful for measurement of inductance at par and radio frequencies so at the par and audio frequency it is very easy for the measurement of inductance so these are the advantages of this bridge next comes the disadvantages the disadvantage of this bridge is that it is limited for the measurement of the inductance for the coils for the low q coils means only it is going to measure the inductance for those coils whose quality factor is low that means it is less than 10 or greater than 1 also this bridge requires variable capacitor okay and this variable capacitor is very expensive and also if we calibrate this uh, capacitor then it requires a very high degree of accuracy so there are two limitations or disadvantage of this bridge that this bridge is going to measure the inductance for only the low q coils and also it requires variable capacitor which is a very expensive okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of this bridge so here we have studied in this video about the maxwell inductance capacitance bridge which measures the inductance by comparing it with a standard capacitor we draw its uh, we saw its circuit we then see its balance equation its phasor diagram its advantages and disadvantages we have seen and we have seen that what will be the value of inductance in terms of the capacitance so i hope that this topic is now clear to you thank you